Welcome, and welcome back, everybody, to the OK Grognard Show. Today is Monday, August 29th, 2022, 10 a.m. Central in beautiful Lake Geneva, Wisconsin. We've been uh, doing a series. Morning, Sarah. I'm just... Uh, You caught a little of my pre-show setup. I had to double-check my camera angles and stuff. Thanks for joining us. Uh, We are doing the Advanced Dungeons & Dragons Dungeon Master's Guide section on magic items. Going through it, discussing it a little bit, making some comments and uh, critiques on uh, the various items as we go. So no, that wasn't that wasn't on your end, Sarah. That was on my end with the uh, with the sound being out because I uh, hadn't clicked uh, my mic on yet while I was fixing up my cameras and setting up the windows for the various <laughs> various takes. Uh, we are currently on part twelve. Of this series we are into the rod staves and wand section and we've done the tables and did the overview and we're gonna look at the actual descriptions of rods today and maybe a little more we'll see how the time goes and uh, play it by ear so rods it is Yeah, <laughs> I'll get these cameras set up better one of these days, right? So it says in the book, unless specified otherwise, rods radiate a magical effect which influences cre- creatures hostile to the wielder. Rod of absorption. Well, you know, let's look at that phrase because this is kind of packed for one sentence to open up the section, right? Unless specified otherwise, rods radiate a magical effect which influences creatures hostile to the wielder. So the magic being used, I think there's an assumption there that... uh, that the creatures that you're influencing are hostile. It's quite possible they're unaware of the wielder prior to the use of the rod. So I think there's a a little more in there than is necessarily true. What else we got here? Rod of absorption. Let's look at the first one. The rod acts as a magnet and draws magic spells of any nature, cleric, druid, magic user, or illusionist, into itself, nullifying their effects, but storing their potential within until the wielder chooses to release this energy in the form of spells of his or her own casting. The magic absorbed must have been directed at the character possessing the rod, similar to a ring of spell turning. The wielder can instantly detect the spell level and decide on whether to react or not when the rod absorbs it. The wielder can use the energy to cast any spell he or she has memorized in but one segment without loss of spell memory. As long as the spell so cast is of equal or lesser level than the one absorbed. Excess levels are stored as potential and can be cast in like manner in one segment with no spell memory loss as any level spell so long as the wielder knows the spell and has it memorized. The Rod of Absorption can never be recharged. It absorbs 
50 spell levels and can thereafter only discharge any remaining potential it might have within. The wielder will know this upon grasping the item if it has charges used. This indicates that it has already absorbed that many spell levels and they have been used. Example. A cleric has a rod of absorption and uses it to nullify the effect of a hold person spell cast at him by a magic user. The spell now has absorbed three spell levels, can absorb 47 more, and the cleric can, in one segment, cast any first, second, or third level spell he or she has memorized without memory loss of that spell. By using the spell, uh, the stored potential of the rod. Assume the cleric casts a hold person back. The spell is only second level to him or her. So the rod then holds one spell level of potential and can absorb 47 more with the two charges permanently disposed of. Pretty straightforward. I think um, I think you'd find that a uh, cleric would be well to make sure that they memorize something simple and almost always useful every day, whether that's a cure light wounds or a light spell, something straightforward, certainly for magic users, having a first level spell like sleep or magic missile is a good thing to have on hand so that when you do take in some of these especially if you're getting close to full right you want to use it up you want to uh, use it judiciously but you don't want it not being used or just constantly being carried around and just filling up and never actually using it the fact that it doesn't remove the spell from memory essentially letting you duplicate the spell during the course of that day perhaps multiple times is a pretty huge thing so a rod of absorption can uh, create many more spells for you in fact I think uh, I think it's certainly possible to kind of uh, game the system a bit if you are in a obviously one of the best things about the rod is that it can defend you but before it starts to get used if it hasn't any potential spells in it you could certainly get together with uh, another caster have them target you with some spells and absorb them so that you can add some potential into the rod early on and thus make yourself more useful as a caster because of having all that potential loaded up this is to say a magic user and a cleric in the same group and the cleric can have the uh, magic user throw a few spells at him or her and uh, let the rod absorb them and then have many many more cures for instance to take with them on adventure in fact cures that take one segment to cast which is pretty neat let's move on rod of beguiling this rod enables its possessor to radiate an emotional and mental wave of fellow feeling to all creatures with any intelligence whatsoever that is companionship or camaraderie one or higher intelligence so it includes animals then the effect is to cause all such creatures within 20 foot radius of the device to be virtually charmed by the individual and beguiled into regarding him or her as their comrade friend and or mentor no saving throw that's huge the beguiled creature will love and respect the rod wielder they will trustingly listen and obey insofar as 
communication is possible and the instruction seems plausible and does not outwardly consign the beguiled to needless injury or destruction or go against their nature or alignment. Each charge of the rod beguiles for one turn. Ten minutes cannot be recharged. So you cannot have a good character do something evil. Um, in all likelihood, even having somebody get into a battle where there is injury and there's no upside, just fighting for fighting's sake, probably not going to happen. Um, it only lasts for 10 minutes anyway. It does not say that they do not remember what happened. So maybe you can convince someone after beguiling them to do something rather mundane that they might not otherwise have done or just because you need an extra pair of hands deliver this message you know uh, open the door and then after it wears off in 10 minutes if it wasn't something super onerous I don't know that they even realize they were beguiled perhaps they still think of you in a respectful or friendly way anyway and so it wouldn't matter so probably the more demanding the request the more likely it is that they will realize once it wears off that they had been beguiled and maybe be resentful about it so got to be careful about that the rod of cancellation is the next one this dreaded rod is a bane to all classes for its touch will drain any item of all magical properties unless the saving throw versus the cancellation is made. Contact is made by scoring a normal two-hit score in combat melee. This is assuming the item isn't just laying on the floor. I don't think you need to take a swing at something for that so to speak but if you're in combat with somebody and you want to poke at their sword and make contact and take the magic out of their sword got to make it to hit roll right saving throw an item on this table potions 20 scrolls 19 rings 17 so potions super vulnerable the better the item generally speaking the easier it saves and that includes swords holy swords uh, at the bottom there or a nine for a regular magical sword a holy sword only a seven is needed miscellaneous weapons suggests uh, during the asterisk there several small items such as magic arrows or bolts together in one container will be drained simultaneously so you can take out a quiver of arrows or a pouch of magical sling bullets. Notice an artifact or relic only uh, saves on a mere three, but is still vulnerable. A lot of times artifacts and relics are not included with other magic items, but they are on this table and kind of says something about that if the score indicated or higher is not rolled the item is drained using the item upon the items draining the rod itself becomes brittle and is no longer potent drained items are not restorable even by wish so this item is so onerous that a straight up have it crumble practically after using it to drain another item so pick and choose wisely I mean it says you can drain a potion but do you really want to use this rod to of cancellation to take out a mighty potion maybe depends what it is I suppose rod of lordly might pretty fancy this rod has functions which are spell-like as well as uses a 
uh, uses as a magic weapon of different sorts. It also has several more mundane workings. The rod of loyalty might is metal thicker than other rods with a, a flanged ball at one end and various studs along its length. It weighs 10 pounds, thus requiring a 16 or greater strength to wield properly. Minus one onto hit rolls for each point below 16. That is strength points. The spell-like functions of the rod are, number one, paralyzation upon touch if the wielder so commands. Number two, fear upon all enemies viewing it if the wielder so desires to a maximum of six inches, 60 feet. Number three, drain two to eight hit points from the opponent touched and bestow them upon the wielder. Up to the rod wielder's normal maximum as a ring of regeneration. So I would say that's only on the bestowing. You could still do the draining from someone else. You just can't benefit from them if you haven't already taken some damage yourself. Each such function draws off one charge from the rod. The functions entitle victims to saving throws versus magic. With the exception of function three above, which requires a successful hit during melee combat. So no saving throw if you're doing the swing and hit bit. That was something uh, that is carried over for a long time. Often if a spell or an ability or a function of a magic item requires it to hit roll, then the saving throw is foregone. Very rarely are both stacked, as it were, on top of each other. The weapon of choice, uh, the weapon uses of the rod are, number one, as a plus two mace. Number two, a plus one sword of flame when button one is pushed. A blade springs forth from the ball, which becomes the hilt. While the handle shortens, the weapon to an overall length of three feet. Number three, plus four battle axe. When button two is pushed, blades spring forth at the ball and the hole lengthens to a four foot length. Battle axe typically being a two handed weapon. Plus three spear is the fourth one. When button three is pushed, the uh, the sword blade springs forth and the handle can be lengthened up to 12 feet for an entire uh, for an overall length of 6 foot minimum to 15 foot maximum the latter length is highly suitable for lance employment these functions do not use charges um, do, do, do. that's on the following ones the mundane ones that follow so using it as a weapon apparently does use charges that kind of surprises me some reason I remember this as the weapon functions not requiring charges in fact i remember somebody who used to use that spear function to create essentially a 10 foot pole but up to 15 feet right because the rod is such a uh, strong sort of uh make that uh it's metal, it's thicker than other rods. It's got to use as a spear. It's got to be a certain thickness as a spear just to be usable. So, very sturdy rod that can be used for getting across pits, various other things like that. It was used for in the campaign that I recall, one that I played in. Anyway. The mundane uses of rod are climbing pole, button four, there you go, anchoring granite extruded from the butt. 
Yep, read on, Mark. Read the whole listing before you start commenting, right? When button four is pushed, the spike can anchor in granite and extruded from the butt while the tip sprouts three sharp hooks. The rod then the rod lengthens five feet per segment until button four is pushed again. Or until fifty feet is reached. There you go. If I uh, in either case horizontal bars three inch lengths then fold out from the sides one foot apart in staggered progression the rod is firmly held by the spike and the hooks and will bear up to 4,000 pounds 40,000 gold piece equivalent weight it retracts by pushing button five <laughs> hope somebody doesn't push it when someone else is halfway up the rod huh? number two the same function will force doors open if the rod's base is planted 30 feet or less from the portal to be forced and is in line with it the force exerted is equal to storm giant strength number three when button six is pushed the rod will indicate magnetic north and give the possessor a knowledge of approximate depth beneath the surface or height above it that he or she is these functions do not use charges either okay all right so that is the follow-up so none of the weapons ones use charges for sure okay good the rod of lordly might cannot be recharged when its charges are exhausted all spell like functions cease as do weapon functions two and three but the rod continues to work in all other ways so two and three which were just to refresh our memory the sword of flame and the battle axe so you can still hit people with it like a mace and you can still use the spear function apparently so the sword the sword blade springs forth lengthened up to 12 feet minimum of six feet that precludes it being used as a sword i wondered if maybe you could argue that it could be used as a sword but without the flame um, so plus two mace plus three spear even after it's out of charges that's uh, considerable for an item that has many uses in between till you get to that point the paralyzation one is just phenomenal for starters rod of resurrection this rod enables the cleric to resurrect the dead even elven dwarven gnome and half or halfling as if he or she were of high enough level to cast a spell and no rest will be required as the rod bestows the life giving effects the rod can be used once per day the number of charges used to resurrect a character depends on the class and race interesting and notice the plus over the race column here so class add that to whatever race highest one here assassin is a four a lot of threes magic using classes and the thief the monk only a one for a paladin only a one for a cleric twos for the rest but you can imagine a elf assassin or a half orc assassin using up eight charges causing some grumbling amongst the party maybe we should just let you die and not roll up an assassin or be a half orc again neither of which are a lot of my own campaign because i prefer not to multi-class characters use the least favorable category the rod cannot be recharged that's a sentence they just copied and pasted right over and over on each listing rod of rulership the individual who possesses this magic rod is able to exercise rulership command the obedience and fealty of creatures within 120 feet when he or she activates well 12 inches activates the device from 200 to 500 hit dice or levels of experience can be ruled 
but creatures with 15 or greater intelligence and 12 or more hit dice and or levels are entitled to a saving throw versus magic. Ruled creatures will obey the wielder of the rod of rulership as if he or she were their absolute suzerain. But if some command is given, which is absolutely contrary to the nature of the commanded, the magic will be broken. The rod takes five segments to activate. A bit of a delay on that one. Each charge lasts for one turn. A rod cannot be recharged. So, you can get a small army here, right? But not for long. Even if you had 36 charges, that's only six hours, which is not forever. You could start an uprising. Probably can't complete one. Rod of Smiting is the last of the rods. This rod is a plus three magic weapon, which inflicts four to 11. That's 1d8 plus three hit points of damage. Against golems, the rod does 8 to 22, 2d8 plus 6, that's double. Hit points of damage, double the range anyway. Hit points of damage, any score of 20 or better completely destroys the monster. Just golems. But any hit upon a golem drains one charge. The rod does normal damage, 4 to 11, versus... Creatures of the outer planes, such as demons, devils, and night hags, any score of 20 or better, draws off one charge and causes triple damage. The rod cannot be recharged. Pretty straightforward. Just a numbers game with that one, right? Um, obviously, if you're DMing and you have golems in the offing or a trip to a... Uh, Nasty plane where there might be devils or demons. Suzerain is a... Uh, it's uh, someone who's in charge of... Uh, of uh, Generally of fighting men and such. Um... Could be uh, someone who's uh, looked upon as a captain or leader of a group. Um, I'm not sure if there's a, a specific use for it beyond that or more detailed. We can look it up. I'll look it up right now. Because I want to be exact. A sovereign or a sovereign or state having some control over another state that is autonomous. Well, a feudal overlord is the historical meaning for it, so it says here. So anybody to whom fealty has been sworn. So it's uh, someone to whom you owe allegiance. Someone to whom you've sworn fealty um, is better to say than this is just a mentor, a leader, a captain. So perhaps there's a little more to it because of uh, that specific meaning, right? Anywho, that's the end of the rods. And uh, we're at a good time to stop, so I will do so. And I will definitely say thanks to you in the chat for sure. And thanks to everyone who subscribes to the Twitch channel. It's much appreciated. Oops, we got to close that out. Yeah, there we are. All right. The show streams live on Twitch each Monday at 10 a.m. Central and is then archived on YouTube if you catch up with us on Twitch. By all means, please do follow the channel and chime in on the chat if you catch up with this on YouTube. Subscribe and click the bell so you get updated whenever there's a new upload. Comment. Give us a thumbs up on any videos you like and enjoy. also want to thank our Patreon 
Supporters Tom Tellis of Fat Dragon Games, Rick Hershey of Fat Goblin Games, Carlos Lysing, Castle Entertainment, Heath Farnden of the Antipodean D20, Dave O'Brien of Four Quacks Games, and Shane Bradley, DM Extraordinaire. This has been the OK Grognard Show from beautiful Lake Geneva, Wisconsin. Thank you once again, and bye-bye.